All right, we're continuing our chapter with percents by talking about the percents of increase or decrease in section 6.5. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the percent of change. The percent of change is the percent that a quantity changes from the original amount. So that change could be an increase or a decrease. So to find that ratio, to find the percent of change, you would take the amount of change and divide it by the original amount which leads us into our key idea. Now the key idea, here it is, talks about a percent of increase or decrease. Now this is pretty straightforward. Percent of increase is when the original amount increases. So you take the new amount minus the original amount to get the, uh, divided by the original amount. To find the decrease, you take the original amount minus the new amount divided by the original amount. So for example one, finding the percent of increase. The table shows the number of hours you spent online last week, or last weekend. What is the percent of change in your online time from Saturday to Sunday? Oh, let's put a little picture here. Someone's online a little too much from that picture. Uh, so Saturday to Sunday, you're online two hours on Saturday and four and a half hours on Sunday. So obviously we need to find a percent of increase. So the percent of increase is going to be the new amount minus the original amount. So that's four and a half minus two divided by our original amount of two. So that gives us two and a half divided by two, which gives me one and a quarter. Now obviously that's going to be a decimal, but we have to change that to a percent so, which gives me a 125% increase. Now, if you did write that as a proportion, you could do this. What percent? What percent is P out of 100 or X out of 100 equals 2.5 out of 2? You could have cross multiplied. Cross multiplied and got 2X equals 250 divided both sides by 2, which would have given you the same answer as 125%. Now let's say you wanted to look at that and say, oh, well let's do it as a tape diagram. So I'm going to put it up here, tape diagram. You could have set this up and said, well, if 100% is 2, this is my original, so that's 100%. My endpoint has to be 4 and a half hours. But if 100% is 2 hours, that means 200% is 4 hours. Well, half an hour more, a half is a quarter or 25%. So I go an extra 25%. So from 100 to 125%, that gives me an increase of 125%. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this yourself. In the first one, we have a percent of increase. It would be 15 divided by 10, which is 1.5, which would give you a 150% increase. 57 people to 65 people. All right, so if you subtracted 57 from 65, you're gonna get a difference of eight. If you get a difference of eight, you divide that by the original, which is 57, and eight divided by 57 would give you an increase of 0.14, which is approximately a 14% increase. So now let's find a percent of decrease. Percent of decrease. The bar graph shows the softball player's home run totals. What was the percent of change from 2012 to 2013? Well, our percent of decrease is going to be equal to the change. Well, the change from 28 to 20 is a decrease of 8 divided by the original amount of 28 that gives us approximately 0.286. And if we rounded, that would be about 29 or 28.6 percent decrease. Now our next key idea is talking about a percent error. Now this is important. Percent error, we're going to talk about a lot more in um, seventh grade tap, but percent error is what the percent something is changing by, or what's the actual error. For example, if you went out and bought five 20 ounce bottles of Pepsi, I am almost certain that they're not all 20 ounces. 
there's going to be a percent error in every bottle they filled. And that's okay. There's, it's called like a, um, a percent error measurement. So each one is allowed to be a percent over or a percent under what it actually should be, which is 20 ounces. So the key idea here, a percent error, is the percent that an estimated quantity differs from the actual amount. So if I said a 20 ounce bottle of pop is not really 20 ounces, it's 21 ounces, the, you would take one, the amount of error, it's one over, divided by the actual amount of 20 ounces that it should be. So you'd take one divided by 20. Now the actual amount of error is going to be always positive. That's a little study tip here. So let's try an example. You're going to take the amount error divided by the actual amount. Find the percent of error. You estimate the length of the classroom is 16 feet, but the actual length is 21 feet. So you're way off. But if you actually estimated it as 16 feet, you were off by 5. We subtract them. So the amount of error was 5 feet divided by the actual amount which is 21, not the original amount, the actual amount. As a decimal, that gives you approximately 0.238, which gives you approximately 23.8% error.